So, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to the 56th public lecture series of the Archaeological Research Unit of the University of Cyprus and to the third Zoom lecture of the semester. I'm very pleased to welcome and introduce our tonight's speaker, Dr. Sergius Menelao, postdoctoral fellow at the ARU since last year. Sergius Menelao graduated in 2012, having been one of our undergraduate students at the University of Cyprus. In 2013, he received his MSc in Archaeological Materials from the Department of Archaeology of the University of Sheffield and was awarded his doctoral title from the same institution in 2018. After leaving the UK, he held a postdoctoral fellowship at the Research Centre for Anatolian Civilizations of Koch University in Istanbul in 2018 to 2019, while shortly afterwards, he spent three months at the Fitch Laboratory of the British School at Athens, holding a Fitch Bursary Award. He is currently postdoctoral fellow at the ARU and coordinator and principal investigator of the project with the acronym BORDER, or Borderlands as Areas of Mobility and Connectivity during the third millennium BC, examining regional ceramic assemblages between the East Aegean Islands, Western Anatolia and Cyprus, funded by the Research and Innovation Foundation of the Republic of Cyprus. The prehistoric Aegean and Anatolian archaeology feature amongst his main research interests, particularly from the Final Neolithic and Calicolithic to the Middle Bronze Age. Sedius is particularly interested in the application of an integrated methodology that combines the traditional study of ceramics and the application of scientific analytical techniques, such as ceramic petrography, scanning, scanning electron microscopy and chemistry, to recover technological information re related to pottery production, use and circulation. Sergius has been a core collaborator of the excavation project, the prehistoric settlement at Heraion and Samos, the Sacred Road, since 2009, directed by Urania Kuka, in collaboration with the German Archaeological Institute at Athens. His research on Samos was focused on the multiscalar analysis of early Bronze Age pottery from the recent and past excavations at Heraion. His work overall focuses on ceramic developments and technological mobility and connectivity in the Eastern Aegean, Western Anatolia and Cyprus during the third millennium BC. He has participated in various excavations projects in Greece, namely in, in, in Cyprus, sorry, namely Palepaphos Kuklia and Neapaphos, and Greece, such as the Heraion of Samos, Kalapodi in Atalandi, and Keros Daskalio in the Cyclades and has presented results of his work in 30 international conferences and workshops at several institutions in Europe, the UK, Mexico, and the United States. He has published 14 papers to date in peer-reviewed journals, conference proceedings, edited volumes, and exhibition catalogues. He has received scholarships and grants to support his studies, fieldwork, and collaborative projects from several funding bodies, such as the Hellenic Scholarships Foundation, the Institute for Aegean Prehistory, the University of Sef Sheffield, the Leventis, and the Onassis Foundations. Before giving our virtual floor to Sergius, I would like to remind you to now switch off your cameras and mute your microphones. Should you wish to address a question or comment to our speaker, feel free to use the chat button on Zoom. You may also switch on your cameras after the end of the presentation to address your question directly to the speaker by raising your hand and unmuting your microphone. Yes, Sergius, good evening and welcome. Thank you very much for this kind uh, introduction and for organizing uh, this lecture series and of course for ha having me here tonight. I can now share my screen. And I hope you can all see and hear me. Okay. Yes, we can. So uh, good evening, everyone. It is a very great pleasure to, to be presenting and sharing my ongoing research among quite many friends and colleagues. And I'm really grateful I can do this as part of the archeological research unit. So this uh, presentation and related research form part of a two year postdoctoral program with the acronym BORDER which is being carried out since September last year and is co-funded by the European Regional Development Fund and the Republic of Cyprus through the Research and Innovation Foundation. 
Unfortunately, due to COVID-related restrictions and limitations of last year, much of the field and laboratory work has been postponed for this year uh, of the project. So in this presentation, I will try to give a brief overview of the aims, uh, theoretical ideas, and some preliminary uh, views. The border project includes the large-scale analysis of ceramic assemblages from key sites in the geographical region that covers the Eastern Aegean Islands, Western Anatolia, and, and Cyprus. It addresses themes of cross-regional significance, such as uh, craft, uh, ancient craft technology, mobility and connectivity, the definition of cultural and geographical borders, and the interdisciplinary study of old ceramic material. The overall aims are to establish a micro-scale understanding of the local ceramic sequences at the third millennium BC island settlements of Limnos, Lesbos, Chios, and Samos. The contextualization of these islands with Western Anatolia through an extensive comparative uh, analysis of pottery. And ultimately, the research will move towards the macro-scale uh, level uh, through a comparison of ceramic and cultural developments in Cyprus. For tonight's talk, I will focus on the East Aegean borderland and discuss developments in archaeological theory and practice in the region through the lens of ceramic analysis. I will begin with uh, giving a background to this research with the aim to consider how we define archaeological borders between insular and mainland areas and to explore the role of boundaries in the dynamic construction of cultural identities. Various terms are often used interchangeably in synonymous ways to describe these complex phenomena as a separation line between two or more areas, namely boundary, uh, border, and frontier, which almost ex exclusively bear negative connotations. While borders can be static and spatially fixed, frontiers can be described as more fluid uh, and zonal. However, especially in our modern wor uh, world, but also with examples of the ancient past, we can recognize geographical boundaries like uh, topographical features, uh, mountains, the sea, large rivers, where a border can be something very clear and tangible, as in the case of Hadrian's Wall, Berlin Wall, or even the establishment of buffer zones, as is the case of Cyprus. At other times, they can be fluid and imprecise, like political, economic and cultural boundaries where borders serve as interfaces of contact and interaction zones. So the question is, uh, can we identify such borderlands in the Eastern Aegean and what role did the movement of people, materials and ideas had on the creation of a cultural identity in the region? Island archaeology in the Mediterranean has received increasing attention over the last few decades with questions being appropriated to the theoretical idiosyncrasies of each time which is reflected in numerous old and more recent publications. On the basis of their geographical demarcation as naturally bordered areas, the, and the premise that islands represent well-defined spaces, their study has formed a popular research topic since the 1960s, becoming even, <clears throat> becoming especially favored during the 1970s and 80s with the influential work by Evans. Evans has set the focus on islands as representing laboratories of cultural change, for it was thought that their assumed inherent isolation would facilitate an ideal context for observing and analyzing how human cultures develop. This approach proved to be not only insufficient uh, due to its ecologically and deterministic nature, but also in the problematic use of the term culture, following the assumption that islands encompass a very specific way of living. Having its roots in the 19th century, the culture concept was thought to entail a fixed set of material features and the trend of equating artifacts to people in a spatial temporal relationship. In addition to that, archaeologists working in the Mediterranean have increasingly expressed an interest in exploring the concept of insularity. This concept considers islands as static and passive, and it assumes geographical isolation. In other words, the state of being an island and the quality of being secluded as a result of living on islands. However, isolation depends on the degree of insularity and it often depends on human control factors such as technology and transport instead of just ecological, geographical and natural circumstances. Insularity then is a social, is, is a social rather than a natural condition. While viewing islands as laboratories for the study of change and social transformations, geocultural boundaries or even the transmission of materials, when it comes to comprehending the process of cultural development, 
the practicalities of being an islander, the levels of connectivity, or even the factors that enabled such maritime connections were until, until recently left somehow unnoticed. In recent years, more important attempts have been made to move away from aspects of colonization and biogeography with methods in, including field survey projects, GIS-based spatial analysis and proximal viewpoint analysis for the reconstruction of networks. Such attempts were carried out with a special focus in the central Aegean by Broadband, with more recent work undertaken by other researchers demonstrating an ideal case study for modeling intra-regional maritime small world connections. However, such attempts are to date missing from the Eastern Aegean, where the islands are considered peripheral and passive in the adoption of novelties. Geographically, framing today's eastern limits between Greece and Turkey, the Aegean Sea hosts hundreds of islands, and a number of clusters can be separated into the Argos Aronic Islands, the Cyclades, the Sporades along the east coast of mainland Greece, the Northeast Aegean Islands stretching along the Anatolian coast and south of Thrace, and the Dodeganese uh, in the Southeast Aegean of the Anatolian coast. In modern terms, these island clusters are geographically defined as in the case of the Cyclades and the, and the Sporades, or grouped together for administrative purposes, as is the case uh, for the uh, Northeast Aegean Islands. Nonetheless, in some cases, this clustering corresponds to what represents in archaeological literature, cultural groups. Of these regional groups, a special emphasis has been so far put on the prehistoric Cyclades due to the intensity in systematic research and an early interest expressed by European travelers. In contrast to that, the island clusters of the Northeast Aegean and the Dodeganese have been to a large degree overlooked due to their marginal position at the eastern limits of the modern Greek state. As Jeremy Ratter has recently pointed out, there is a need to become more familiar with the Eastern Aegean, and this view is reflective on the one hand of this region's significance and on the other of the lacuna in archaeological scholarship. From an archaeological point of view, the investigation of island and mainland interaction seems particularly intriguing in the East Aegean region, and this is both due to its advantageous geography and the rich stratigraphic sequences spanning since the Neolithic uh, period. The first evidence for, for island and mainland interaction in the East Aegean relates to the earliest human presence uh, on the islands that has been attributed to the Paleolithic and the Mesolithic, greatly expanding our previous knowledge, while enriched data also from coastal Western Anatolia sheds new light into human dispersals and possible connections with the offshore islands. Permanent settlements in the sense of a long-term occupation of open-air sites and caves on the East Aegean islands appeared from the Neolithic period, on, period onwards, as you can see on the list uh, in, the, in the screen. Inter-island and island mainland communication between the East Aegean islands and the opposite Anatolian landmass presupposes seafaring knowledge and technological developments in maritime navigation, despite being separated only by a few kilometers and often at a high visibility. Perhaps the island groupings in the northeast, including the islands of Imbros, Samothrace, Limnos, and Dios of Stratios, and the Dodeganese in the southeast, are far more interconnected and closely clustered than those in between, like the islands of Lesbos, Hios, and Samos. The size of some of the East Aegean islands and their separation from the nearest mainland may have been the main determinants of their early colonization, but distance alone is not a sufficient explanation for the assumed isolation or openness of an island community. The first evidence for connectivity and successful navigation on Aegean maritime networks is attested in the distribution of obsidian from Milos during the late Pleistocene to early Holocene transition, with obsidian found in a number of Mesolithic and early Neolithic sites as far as the East Aegean islands and Western Anatolia. Furthermore, substantial quantities of obsidian found on Samos already since the 5th millennium C, alongside other imported materials, supports the hypothesis that those islands acted as gate gateway hubs for communication and circulation of Aegean raw materials, peoples, and ideas with coastal Western Anatolia. As such, million obsidian was likely transported via established communication arteries towards Western and inner, inner Anatolia, uh, for instance, the sites of Chukuri Chukuri, you can only check for you, 
provided through natural river passages already since the 70 millennium BC. Increasing evidence of continuing interactions and exchange networks in the region seems to develop further during the fifth and fourth, fourth millennia BC with changes in settlement patterns, spatial organization, pottery production and consumption, circulation of special function artifacts, and other sociocultural and technological advances. Important in our discussion is also the Perea concept, which provides a framework for understanding the ancient perception of space between islands and their adjacent mainland. The Perea, a term becoming widely used in the second century BC, basically refers to the mainland territories beyond the limits of a certain area or the land opposite the island city that controlled them in the classical past. In, in historical times, and as we know through literary sources, almost all of the island centers of the East Aegean held the territory on the adjacent coast, which functioned not only politically, but was also used for economic reasons and facilitated the constant exchange and movement of people and products. The, the Perea may have acted as the bridge for the early settlers of the nearby uh, islands, and this is reflected in the material culture of the Northeast and the Dodeganese Islands, showing affinities with the Western Anatolian littoral. Uh, for instance, the islands of Thassos and Samothrace uh, show affinities with the coast of Eastern Macedonia and Thrace to the north, while the Northern Sporades shows affinities with, uh, show affinities with uh, Thessaly. So we should imagine that the East Aegean islands were always connected more with, with their adjacent mainland in Western Anatolia rather than the Central Aegean. And this diachronic relationship either reflected in material cultural affinities in prehistory or in historical sources in later periods was redefined and transformed depending on various parameters. The Perea can be better approached from, for prehistoric interactions through the coastscape concept. This essentially refers to coastal zones defined by the shoreline and adjacent resources inhabited and exploited by the maritime communities. They are extremely important for our understanding of the aforementioned interactions as coastscapes encompass also the waters utilized by these communities for economic and social purposes, as well as the visual and cogn cognitive structuring of daily life for both islanders and mainlanders. Perhaps coastlands on specific islands and the nearby Anatolian mainland could form separate maritime small worlds well exemplified in matching technological developments and stylistic influences. As for instance, Limnos with the Troad, Lesbos with the Madra River region, Chios and the Izmir region, and Samos with the Upper Meander region. This was likely facilitated through geographical proximity, intervisibility and ease of travel, which would diachronically allow habitual interaction, shared ideology and strengthen social ties. As has already been made clear, the region in question is traditionally separated in scholarship in Northeast Islands and Southeast Islands, although the border between the two subclusters seems less meaningful in archaeological terms. The separation in scholarship of the East Aegean Islands from Western Anatolia coastlands reflects also modern political and ethnic constructions between Greece and Turkey, and it, and it is in this framework that, that the East Aegean Islands should be examined during prehistory, where although geographically distant from the rest of the Hellenic world until the early 20th century, they were considered as part of the Ottoman Empire and thus culturally, sociopolitically and economically oriented towards the East. With the loss of the Perea after the political separation between Greece and Turkey, culminating in the population exchange of 1920-23, the cultural character of the island stretching along the Anatolian coast has also been dramatically reconfigured. Unfortunately, this political breakup of what had once encompassed the islands in coastal Anatolia in a single territorial space is also reflected in the archaeological practice between the two countries and the study of Greek islands and Turkish coastlands in almost total isolation from each other. Archaeological heritage and tradition in both Greece and Turkey have largely depended on contemporary government policies, with a primary focus on legitimizing each nation's independent exist existence and uncovering a homogeneous ethnic past of their modern states. However, this gap is nowadays bridged through important collaborative research between local archaeological authorities and the involvement of foreign schools um, 
and of, of, of foreign schools from both countries. Particularly the role of foreign archaeological schools and institutes since the early 20th, 20th century in serving national traditions and their position on where these islands belong has influenced greatly the subsequent theoretical developments in the archaeological practice of the East Aegean Islands. In the case of Limnos, the Italian archaeological, archaeological school aimed at establishing ethnic links between the Etruscans and the Northern Aegean, while for Ellen Bronze Age Lesbos, the arguments favored close affinities and perhaps migrations of Anatolian people towards the West in the search for metal ores. Similar efforts were made in the early investigations of coastal Western Anatolia with the aim to elucidate its Hellen uh, Hellenicized prehistoric past. This account of two major con contrasting trends in archaeological scholarship, either in support of separateness between the East Aegean Islands and Western Anatolia, in an effort to validate modern ideas, or emphasizing their cultural coherence versus the rest of the Aegean world, is indeed characteristic of the marginalization of this region, both geographically and in terms of research. Having discussed the various approaches in the study of insularity and marginality in the Aegean and its eastern part, more specifically, I'm now going to talk about the main theoretical directions that have been put forward in the study of connectivity and mobility. This, uh, uh, this roughly includes the detection of patterns through various archaeological remains, which is taken to represent a cultural koine. This concept follows evolutionary theories and favors the notion of homogeneity in the material expression of the region. Shared features are identified in ceramic styles, construction techniques, circulated artifacts, being explained by a cultural uniformity beginning at least by the end of the Chalcolithic or uh, the early Bronze Age I period. Reversely, the Eastern Aegean region is often uh, researched under the influence of post-colonial approaches that seek to explain the offshore islands as peripheral and passive recipients of superior traditions in their relationship with the Anatolia mainland. However, the very nature of such maritime zones enabled and promoted interregional interactions, obviously the adoption of material and ideological novelties, as we, as we will see in a while. And lastly, mobility is another very popular topic for explaining the appearance of common cultural traits. Despite being influenced by different theoretical trends, these concepts share the use of large scale, long distance narratives for the reconstruction of interaction and connectivity. Although extremely useful, this is not always achievable as we tend to see routes of communication as regular and systematic through a comparison with modern well-controlled conditions that seek explanations for increased connectivity in economy-based theories. What we are often able to recognize though is rather the frequency of movement of things and people rather than directionality. Aside from the deficiencies of our methodologies for the construction of connectivity patterns, the detailed study of production, consumption, and distribution of certain artifacts across space and time may enable a better understanding of the relationships between places at the micro level. Pottery is used here as the main proxy for tracing such interactions and spatial movement. The recent access to suitable ceramic data sets has enabled me to test methodologically the significance of microscale analysis of well-defined insular places, which among other objectives, form the basis for defining the local technological tradition and for determining a secure provenance through the application of an integrated methodology. This has been achieved following the combination of various levels of analysis for typology and contextual study of entire ceramic assemblages. And this body of evidence is then integrated with a detailed fabric study through macroscopic analysis and thin section photography. The following discussion presents diachronic ceramic developments from selected island centers of the East Aegean, but a particular focus is placed on the island of Samos with emphasis on the Herion settlement. This includes a brief overview of ceramic connections, both at an inter-island inter and an island mainland level with reference to our understanding of locations production. The secure identification of imports, at least in the case of pottery from Samos, was achieved through the examination of comparative material from neighboring sites and regions. But for other sites mentioned uh, tonight, the assessment was largely based on published shapes, wares, and macroscopic fabrics. 
So starting from the earlier prehistory of the island, which corresponds to the final Neolithic and Calcolithic, we see a variety of artifact elements that point towards the long distance connectivity between the eastern and southeastern side of the Aegean with the Cyclades, such as marble figurines and obsidian tools. In ceramic terms, strong links are observed in the distribution of specific types in the eastern Aegean, but most diagnostic are the so-called cheese pots, which are found at various sites across the Cyclades, Crete, the Dodeganese, the Northeast Aegean Islands, and Western Anatolia. One such is shown by petrography to have been imported from the central Aegea, similarly to new evidence also from Eastern Crete. The early Bronze Age one is often labeled maritime culture of Troy or the beginning of the Northern and Eastern Aegean culture on the basis of an assumed cultural koine throughout the North and East Aegean. During this period, evidence suggests a busy social environment with a densely inhabited landscape as indicated by an increase in the number of settlements. Significant developments occur also in craft technologies. This is evidenced in the diverse exploitation of materials and exchange of finished products from broader sources, the operation of more specialized communities of practice, in addition to changes in town planning and the emergence of a new settlement type. Apart from the settlement organization, changes also occur in the construction techniques and use of communal or special function buildings. In terms of pottery, there is no common agreement regarding the distinction between late Calcolithic and early Bronze Age one traditions, and there is a strong continuity alongside the existence of various regional characteristics. Each site developed its local manufacturing tradition, but certain ceramic links provide a chronological correlation with other regions, such as the presence of uh, the so-called fruit stands in Polyochni, and the connection with the Campos group in the Cyclades and Crete. Polyochni has been interpreted as a sea-oriented Anatolian style community, which exhibits the closest ceramic correlations with the opposite Troad region in Western Anatolia, while Thermion Lesbos is characterized as an outpost of Anatolia with ceramic features extending from Northwest, uh, the Troad region, and the Lydian ceramic zone of the Madra River Delta. More tangible evidence for ceramic connectivity is seen in the presence of imports appearing in both directions of the Aegea. For instance, Limandepe has the first Cycladic imports during the Anatolia and Early Bronze Age I, in the form of frying pans, dark on light pixides, and unfirmy sauce boats that are correlated with the early Cycladic I and two early periods. Polyochni seems to have major contacts with mainland Greece and the Cyclades, as suggested also by potential ceramic imports in the blue phase. Thermi has also apparent Cycladic elements and imports, such as marble and, uh, and metal artifacts. And finally, early Bronze Age one and two imports from the Cyclades or mainland Greece are also attested at Emporio and Chios, such as the obsidian ceramic ware. Additional evidence for the circulation of Aegeanizing uh, ceramic artifacts towards the east is found in the Troad region through the identification of Orphirnis and the so-called East Aegean ware, as well as the scored ware at Troy and Halasarna on, on Kos. During the first half of the third millennium BC uh, at Tierayon and Samos, we see a homogeneous local manufacture of pottery in terms of fabric, finish, forming, and firing techniques. The analytical fabric evidence from this site provides an informative picture of ceramic movement from Western Anatolia already in early Bronze Age I, and it is hereby suggested that at least two of island fabrics have been identified uh, on Samos. An intermediate volcanic fabric that is represented by pithoid jars, perhaps with a provenance in southwest Anatolia, and the sand tempered metamorphic fabric that has close parallels to date at Chuguri Chiroyuk and is represented by a few storage vessels. The distinctive character of the next phase, early Bronze Age II, can be well attested in the cultural transformations and includes more complex specialized industries than development. Um, of central supra-regional settlements, the expansion of communication networks and developments in technologies. This period has been defined on the basis of a number of artifact categories and the circulation of certain ceramic wares, which largely continue from the previous, uh, the early Bronze Age one phase. Although uh, relatively rare, 
The more common among the cycladic pottery finds in Basin Aegea are frying pans, pixides, sauce boats, dark and light painted ware, transport colored jars, and big jugs. Such imports are known as Poliochni, Therni, Emporio, Herion, the Alasarna region on South Central Coast, Limantebe, and uh, recent finds also at Laodicea. The later part of early Bronze Age II is characterized by fragmentation as reflected in the different ceramic styles occurring from the mid third millennium BC onwards, often interpreted as a symptom of technological innovation, specialization, and the participation in different spheres of interaction. The increased interaction is reflected in is reflected in the distribution of a set of new drinking and serving ceramic vessels and other technological advances. These features are found in a wide uh, geographical area on both sides of the Aegean Sea, the so-called Lefkandi one or Castri group in Heladic and Cycladic terms, or the Anatolian trade network in Western Anatolian terms. This ceramic phenomenon and associated new shapes have been characterized as Anatolianizing when found outside Anatolia, and have been inter interpreted as being foreign or intrusive, for they have been taken to represent imitations of, of Anatolian prototypes and the movement of people from Anatolia, implying the supremacy of the mainland as opposed to the inferiority of islands in the west of the Anatolian pole. In the light of new analytical work at Samos, this large-scale ceramic phenomenon seems to be inconsistent in terms of its introduction and distribution, as well as associations of context, chronology, and possibly also use. And the appearance of these novel shapes and technologies could be both the outcome of indigenous appropriation of foreign styles and the movement of pottery for various off-island sources circulated through varied exchange mechanisms. Although representing only minimal quantities within the local Herion assemblage, it is noteworthy that the imports correspond to a large number of non-local fabrics with an known or suspected geological provenance in Western Anatolia or fabrics where the origin of production have yet to be de determined. At the same time, we see Central Aegean ceramics reaching Samos from many Cycladic islands in the form of storage and drinking vessels. Compared to early Bronze Age one, there is indeed an increased connectivity translated in the circulation of a larger range of shapes and the identification of a number of Central Aegean and Western Anatolian production centers. The cultural features outlined become more intense in early Bronze Age three, with common developments appearing over a large area from inland Western Anatolia towards the Aegean coastline and beyond. All the developments brought about within this newly established uh, relation between distant regions are decreased in late early Bronze Age 3 or early, early Bronze Age 3b, when a series of destructions and abandonments are noted, possibly showing evidence of a short occupation gap or significant reorganizations in some sites of Western Anatolia, such as Troy, Limantepe, Bechesu, and Tafrodias. Similar abandonments and gaps are noted at Poliokni and the Borgo. Major changes are also evidenced in the de uh, decline of the once strong urban centers and the abandonment of their monumental administrative buildings, such as at Limantebe and Herion. Now, regarding ceramic developments, there seems to be an abrupt change in early Bronze Age three at many Aegean and Anatolian sites. The shape repertoire is greatly enriched with new types. Technological changes are observed in various stages of the manufacturing procedures, such as the use of finer clays or more careful processing by the potters, the achievement of higher temperatures and better control, uh, controlled firing strategies. All these are usually interpreted as the result of a more specialized and standardized ceramic production. Strong ceramic links are observed in the appearance of regional types, such as uh, the red slipped and burnished uh, shallow bowls, bowls with S -sh shaped rim. Uh, wheel made plates, one handled uh, pedestal strainers, neck handled ovoid jacks, strap handled or handled less caps with a metallic looking appearance, color jars with horizontal handles, and crown lids. These types are circulated on Samos and the Dodeganese Islands, as well as the southwest Anatolian coast, especially along the Meander River Valley 
and occasionally at Troy and Polyokne. And here you can see the sites, the main sites that these shapes are found at. Other parallels are seen in the um, Barbudin ware jars and the winged jars with close examples at Troy and Aphrodisias. Dark on light pattern painted ware vessels of, EB, of, of the late early Bronze Age three, like shallow bowls, Ascoi and collar neck jars is another interaction marker of the Dodeganese islands and Samos with the Cycladis, particularly uh, most likely Milos and Aegina in the Western Aegean. More connections with the Cycladis are also observed with the circulation, uh, circulation of shapes such as uh, incised spherical or conical pixides and Ascoi or the so called duck bases. The identification of imports on Samos from various Central Aegean islands, some of which imply the continuation in contacts from the preceding Early Bronze Age II late period, further supports the claim that communications between East and West were facilitated and expanded through the incentive of Cycladic seafarers. Nevertheless, this does not exclude the active role of equivalent seafarers from the East Aegean islands or Western Anatolian literal, given also the dissemination of uh, technological advances like the potter's wheel or the, the new uh, drinking and serving uh, set. The appearance and spread of novel continuing or even uh, hybrid, uh, hybridized ceramic developments seems to relate to the preceding changes occurred as part of the intensification of contacts between the Aegean and Western Anatolia. Shifts in connectivity patterns of early Bronze Age three periods and the intense geographical distribution of mostly drinking and serving vessels suggested the establishment of a strong regional network of interactions, which enabled the spread of common practices, perhaps in the context of new consumption behaviors, identity negotiation, and social display. These morphological and technological changes and regional similarities document the, tra the transfer of technological knowledge through a face-to-face -face interaction that could only be disseminated by the mobility of potters. It was a short discussion, so now I'm going to try to wrap up uh, with a few preliminary remarks. So as well-defined spaces, islands, and in this case, the Eastern Aegean clusters, provide useful units in the study of connectivity, both with other islands and adjacent mainland under the lens of the coastscape concept. However, it becomes clear that the boundaries between insular and non-insular in the East Aegean are blurred, and perhaps sometimes these island communities are only spatially disconnected, disconnected from the nearby mainland. This is reflected in modern archeological scholarship where the whole region is interchangeably termed as sometimes as the Eastern Aegean and some others as the Aegean slash Anatolian coast under the influence of modern sociopolitical narratives. In fact, they are culturally and socioeconomically connected in prehistory as a result of advances in technologies of mobility and thus increasing the island's exposure to various kinds of influences also enabled through geographical and natural parameters. In this talk, I investigated how this is reflected in pottery through a micro-scale approach with emphasis on Samos Island and the diachronic analysis of total ceramic assemblages as markers of interaction has proven to be a very effective approach, particularly when combined with the examination of comparative data in the identification of imports. The current evidence from Samos and other East Aegean islands suggests a busy seascape and shifting maritime activity with changing intensities from the early Bronze Age 1 to the early Bronze Age 3, where these islands are often thought of as intermediaries in communications with the Western Aegea and Anatolia. However, recent data on both the islands and the Anatolian coastlands suggest that human presence and dispersed contacts with other regions are attested as early as the late Pleistocene and early Holocene strongly indicated by the circulation of Milian obsidia. Following a ceramic perspective, it is hereby argued that maritime identity in the East Aegean region was constantly transformed to meet social circumstances 
where the offshore islands have always been in contact with the, with the Anatolian littoral and held a strong visual meaning as part of the everyday field of view and cognitive horizon for the opposite mainland since at least the establishment of more permanent settlements during the Neolithic period. It should be imagined that the common experiences created su through such a bilateral relationship in the sense of a coherent world established through social memory and knowledge of existing geographical roots must have formed some kind of a communal identity that was dramatically transformed with the political separation of Greece, the islands, and Turkey after 1923. It is therefore important to keep in mind that due to their exposure to various kinds of influences and their crucial location and established communication arteries between East and West, the islands tend to have multiple spatial, cultural, and temporal dimensions in the context of economic activities or social negotiation. As such, they are described here as gateway hubs of interaction and exchange. Rather than, rather than understanding East Aegean islands as entities bounded as a consequences of their environmental properties or as frontiers and borders abiding to changes, they should be examined as contact zones being constantly interconnected and transformed where the sea acts as a unifying medium. Finally, this review suggests that simple concepts of connectedness and separateness do not provide sufficient theoretical frameworks for understanding the microscale histories of islands, as there is a tendency to study islands as comparable units, often ignoring existing diversities and variation between one another, or to downgrade islands to a standing under that of continents. With the ever increasing data, our current hypothesis regarding the movement of materials and people will change in the following years with methodologically more holistic project, projects. This presentation has hopefully demonstrated the geographical and historical significance of the East Aegean Islands and that connectivity is not an immutable geographical state, despite the impact of modern narratives and artificial sense of marginality in the region. Thank you all very much for your attention. And I'm ready for questions. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Serie, for sharing with us tonight the preliminary results of your ongoing research. This was, was a fascinating. Quite brief. <laughs> yes, yes, but it was very it was a fascinating presentation and discussion on uh, on connectivity and issues of uh, potential separation or isolation in the Aegean at times, depending on which angle you look at it. And, and it is wonderful also that your work contributes to this ongoing debate uh, at international level uh, on insularity and island archaeology. Uh, it is true that the sea apart from beautiful and calm can also be treacherous and unpredictable, not only creating links and connecting links, trading links, but also um, destroying uh, often seen as an element of, um, of you know, placing both boundaries and acting as means of developing uh, connection networks. And, uh, yes. and uh, it's also worth noting that, uh, as other scholars have noted before, uh, that uh, rather than seeking how to um, how to define um, uh, what we would call the subdiscipline of island archaeology, isolating or rather uh, islanding ourselves academically. Uh, it would be it should we should move towards establishing an archaeology of maritime identity. Exactly. Um, yeah. So also thank you. The coasts, the, the islands themselves, and yes. Exactly, islands and, and coasts, uh, mainland coasts. Uh, 